Pod. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as Bitcoin climbs back above $28,600. I'm also going to be sharing with you a cycle peak between $200,000 and $250,000 per coin. Also, a fun fact, 13 years ago today, the price of Bitcoin topped 10 cents and it's now up 20 million percent ever since. So a good reminder, when in doubt, Zoom out. Also, breaking news, BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, just filed an updated Spot Bitcoin ETF app after the SEC feedback. So Gary Gensler, now it's your move. Also, $800 billion standard chartered bank to offer Bitcoin custody for institutional clients in Dubai starting first quarter of 2024. Send it. Also, Max Kaiser says, people always ask me when Bitcoin $220,000 and why. What's happening in the me in Eurasia will crash the global fiat money central bank Ponzi scheme. So the timing is now. $220,000 is a short-term target. Bitcoin is immortal. You can't stop it. Ponzi schemes are fragile and always collapse. Preach. Also in today's show, we'll be discussing Bitcoin's long-term investors now own over 76% of all the Bitcoin for the first time in Bitcoin history. Shout out to all my long-term hodlers. Also, Grayscale files for a new spot Bitcoin ETF on the NYSE. ARCA, as well as Tesla earnings are revealed and their Bitcoin bags are untouched as the firm splashes out on AI. We'll also be discussing Elon Musk and Mark Cuban teaming up to contest the SEC trial strategies. I'm also going to be sharing with you a $1 million price target as a result of the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF within the next three years. I'll be breaking down this timeline. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. And if you're just joining us, you know what to do. Smash that like button as it helps out tremendously with a YouTube algorithm and make sure you're subscribed to the channel to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day. Just like this. And welcome everyone just joining us. This is podcast episode number 1436. I'm your host JV and today is October 19th, 2023. Naturally, we have lots to cover. Massive shout out to everyone out there in our live Q&A. You can see we have new overlays, a fresh new look for the crypto news alerts pod. You can also see the live and interactive chat now on your screen. So make sure to say hello. Let me know where you're tuning in from and you'll absolutely get a shout out by me as I read all of these comments out loud. But without further ado, now let's dive into today's Bitcoin market watch and check out what is happening in the crypto market, shall we? Checking out Coin360, as you can see here on your screen, we actually have all the major cryptos minus XRP in the green and pumping. Solana leading the pack up 6%, trading above 25 bucks, with Bitcoin hovering above 28,700, looking to retest maybe 29,000. Here she shortly. So let's pump pump it up. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, the current crypto market cap, sits at $1.09 trillion, back on the rise with roughly $40 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. We had a Bitcoin dominance at 51.4%, continuing to climb, with the Ether dominance pretty stagnant today at 17.3%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours, Satoshi Vision leading the pack, up 7%, trading above $43, bucks, followed by Solana, up 6%, trading above 25 bucks, followed by Injective up 6%, trading at $8.54. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past week. Satoshi Vision, INJ, and RLB clearly leading the pack. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, one of my favorite indicators, shows that we're currently rated a 52, which is neutral. Yesterday was a 50, last week a 45, and last month a 46 in fear. So there you have it, fam. How many of you are currently bullish on the King Crypto? Let me know. And do you think we'll retest that $30,000 resistance anytime soon and climb back above? As you know, the annual high thus far is roughly the $32,000 level. And you all know there are so many bullish catalysts we're on the cusp of right now as we're entering into 2024. So let's break down today's Bitcoin technical analysis. Check out the charts and where the Bitcoin price action is likely to go next. And don't forget to give me a shout out in that live chat. Let me know your feedback with the new overlays, the entire fresh new look for crypto news alerts. Holla at your boy. All right. You should be able to see my screen right now. That's J-Pal right there with no lips. (laughs) 
FYI. Bitcoin kept pressure on 28.5 after the October 19th Wall Street Open ahead of the key speech on the United States economic policy. Here you're looking at the Bitcoin one hour candle chart. Data from Cointelegraph and TradingView showed Bitcoin price action gaining strength ahead of the commentary by Jay Powell, the Fed chairman. Now due to speak at the Economic Club of New York at 12 p.m. Eastern, which means he probably already spoke. Foul paces a complex macroeconomic scenario with 10 year United States bond yields at their highest since 2007. And with the ghost of the 2008 financial finance crisis on market participants' radar, the extent to which Powell's language would be dovish or hawkish was a key talking point, quoting Lawrence Leppard here. They can't let the bond route continue. Prediction, Powell is on the verge of saying or doing something which is very dovish, which will cause a massive rally in the U.S. bond market. Now, in the wake of the various data prints showing inflation persistent beyond expectations, the Fed was previously thought to be planning an extended period of high interest rates. And per the latest data from the CME Group Fed Watch tool, the market odds of rates remaining at the current levels at the next meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee on November 1st were nonetheless at 88% versus a mere 11% chance of a further hike. Now, speaking on CNBC's Squawk Box segment, economist Mohamed El Rian suggested that rates should not rise again, a more advantageous outcome to risk assets including crypto, quoting him here, the message to give right now is the Fed is done. We are done. That's what the message should be. Whether he gives it or not, I don't know. That's another story, right? Now, the Bitcoin price movements themselves, meanwhile, stayed locked in place between clouds of liquidity with volatility reduced as a result, quoting analyst and crypto trades. Bitcoin currently being held in between two big walls on finance futures. Open interest rising steadily as the funding rates trend down. Let's see what we'll get after the New York open today. Now, data from on-chain monitoring resource material indicators confirm that the picture remained the same on the Binance order book, which you can see on your screen, with significant support and resistance levels unchanged in the wake of the volatility that started off the week. Now, traders thus kept an eye open for crossing a more significant line in the sand further from the spot price. Amongst them was Crypto Tony, who highlighted that 28,000 and 29,000 targets, respectively, as he outlines here on X. These are the key levels for you to keep your eye on, legends. So 29,000 flip into support to long or short if we lose the lows at 28,000. And uh, again, let me know if you're currently bullish or bearish on that King Crypto. You already know I am bullish as all heck. Now, Stock Money Lizard shared a pretty awesome uh, target here. Our targets are backed up by the Fibonacci extension, which were also correct in the past cycle. The current cycle targets pre-having between 45 and 50,000 per Bitcoin. Cycle peak between 200 and 250 thousand dollars per Bitcoin. Now we're talking as I'm anticipating a multiple six-figure Bitcoin price for this cycle peak. But let me know if you agree or disagree. Now for a fun fact. 13 years ago today, fam, the price of Bitcoin topped a whopping 10 cents, and now it's up 20 million percent ever since. A great reminder when in doubt to zoom out. And breaking news, BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, just filed an updated spot Bitcoin ETF app after the SEC feedback. So now, Gary Gensler, it's your move. What's it going to be? And it doesn't stop there. $800 billion standard chartered bank to offer Bitcoin custody for institutional clients in Dubai in the first quarter of 2024. And guess who is the primary shareholder of standard chartered bank? You guessed it, BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager. Wild, right? Now, quoting Max Kaiser, he recently tweeted, people always ask me, when Bitcoin $220,000? And why? What's happening in the me and Eurasia will crash the global fiat money central bank Ponzi scheme. So the timing is now 220,000 is a short term target. Bitcoin is immortal. You can't stop it. Ponzi schemes are fragile and always collapse. Preach. Now, where are my long term hodlers at? I'm pretty stoked to see a new statistic that this is an all time high record. 76% of the Bitcoin supply is in the hands of the long term hodlers. And you, can you say incoming supply shock? Let's break this baby down. 
And if you're a long-term hodler, put LTH in that live chat. I'll give you a shout out in a little bit. Bitcoin is becoming scarcer than ever. Whether you're a price speculator or new to the market, the latest data from on-chain analytics firm Glassnode shows a record portion of the available Bitcoin supply is locked up in long-term storage. Let's go. At more than 76%, the Bitcoin long-term hodlers control more of the Bitcoin supply than at any point in Bitcoin history. Can you say bullish? Despite the supply increasing with every block in percentage terms, the low time preference Bitcoin investor cohort has a record market presence. As noted by Charles Edwards, the founder and quantitative Bitcoin and digital asset fund Capre Ole Investments, the achievement marks a first in Bitcoin's lifespan, quoting him here, a record 76.2% of the benchmark, or I'm sorry, of the Bitcoin network is locked up with long-term hodlers today, topping the record set in 2015. Less liquid supply means the same people are bidding on less coins. You do the math. And here's the actual tweet he shared on X. Less liquid supply means the same people are bidding on less coins. Facts. Now, how many of you have been accumulating like a mofo? Look at these charts. I mean, it's a great indicator as, you know what I mean? Bitcoin becomes more and more scarce. There's more and more diamond hands, naturally. Edwards referenced the knock-on effect of the long-term hodler record that coins available for other market participants obviously are getting more rare. And Glassnode chart shows that the long-term hodlers increasing their Bitcoin exposure dramatically from mid-2021 onward, hodling through the entirety of the subsequent bear market, only during brief periods since has the percentage of the supply that they control decreased. Now, Cointelegraph, meanwhile, added that Edwards... Uh, while the demand for Bitcoin itself fluctuates, the trend trajectory is clear. Quitting him here. I don't mean demand is the same as 2015. I mean that for the same given demand and a reduced supply means the price must go up. Supply slash demand economics. And he makes a great point. Stock the flow, supply demand. And he's quoted sharing here. But in reality, demand has increased quite a lot since 2015. So it should put even more upward pressure on the price for this cycle. We have never had the Bitcoin supply this constricted going into to a having you damn right cannot wait for april of 2024 fam it's going to be lit the opposite end of the spectrum to the long-term hodlers which is the short-term hodlers aka speculators are also of a major interest to market observers the realized price of the short-term hodler cohort functioned as support during much of this year and this week fresh data shows that the trend continues to remain in play the short-term hodler realized price the price at which all short-term hodlers own coins last moved sits at just below 27,000, and Bitcoin breaking above it this week is an important bullish impetus, according to the latest analysis. Now, as Cointelegraph and TradingView shows, Bitcoin is holding 28,000 support after hitting two-month highs. And in August, meanwhile, the historically low Bitcoin exposure amongst the short-term hodler entities was already on the radar. So let's freaking go. I mean, naturally, you want to follow the smart money, and the smart money equals long-term hodlers. What are all the long-term hodlers do? Doing what they do best. Hoddle, be thy name. You already know, fam. So if you want to get wrecked, follow the short-term hodlers and sell your precious Bitcoin to the likes of Fidelity, BlackRock, MicroStrategy, etc. Pick your weapon. I choose the hodl at the end of the day because that's the name of the game. Bitcoin is as simple as dollar cost averaging and not trading or letting go of your stash in exchange for whatever altcoin chase or pump you're praying is going to happen as the majority of the traders tend to get wrecked, but you already know I'm preaching to the choir fam. And with that being shared, now let's break down our next story of the day and discuss the latest details with the Grayscale ETF. If you didn't know, Grayscale is the largest hodler of Bitcoin in the world. Their product, GBTC, owns over 600 thousand BTC. That's pretty substantial. So let's break this baby down. Massive shout out to everyone in that live chat. Now, major crypto investment firm Grayscale Investments has filed a new application with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission for a new spot Bitcoin ETF. Let's go. October 19th, Grayscale submitted the S3 form registration statement with the SEC intending to list the shares of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust on the New York Stock Exchange, ARCA, under the ticker symbol GBT. 
BTC. The new filing aligns with Grayscale's ongoing effort to convert its Grayscale Bitcoin trust into a Bitcoin spot ETF. According to a statement by Grayscale, quoting them here, we remain committed to working collaboratively and expeditiously with the SEC on behalf of GBTC's investors. The latest S3 registration statement is a shorter filing version of a typical form S1 statement that targets the initial public offering of equity securities registered under the Securities Act. Now, GBTC, however, is eligible to use Form S3, a shorter filing that incorporates by reference its SEC disclosures and reports because its shares have been registered under the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 since January of 2020, and it meets the other requirements of the form, according to Grayscale. Now, the firm mentioned that Grayscale would be able to convert GBTC to an ETF and issue shares on a registered basis once the NYSE ARCA 19B4 app is approved and the Form S3 must be declared effective by the SEC. So here's what the announcement added. Importantly, Bitcoin, or I'm sorry, importantly, uh, GBTC is ready to operate as an ETF under receipt of these regulatory approvals and on behalf of GBTC investors. Grayscale looks forward to working collaboratively and expeditiously with the SEC on these matters. So Mr. Gary Gensler, again, the ball is in your court. The new News comes weeks after the Grayscale and GBTC won an SEC lawsuit for the Spot Bitcoin ETF review with the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia, ordering the SEC to explain why, why, Gary, it rejected Grayscale's application back in June of this year. The company also filed with the SEC to list an Ethereum futures ETF in September, but nobody cares about Ethereum ETF, especially futures, fam. We're looking for the Spot Bitcoin ETF, and that's all. Grayscale is one of the several companies seeking the SEC approval to launch the Spot Bitcoin ETF, including companies like ARK Investment, BlackRock, Fidelity, amongst others. And according to Bloomberg Intelligence Analyst James Safart, BlackRock filed an updated Bitcoin ETF prospectus October 19th, which is today as well, as I shared in the intro of the show. The filing is likely their response to the SEC comments, like we have seen from ARK, Fidelity, and others, he said, adding that it brings more confirmation that issuers are in talks with the SEC. So it's a good sign. It's only a matter of time before the spot Bitcoin ETF gets approved. And the million dollar question becomes, which one is likely to be approved first? Will it be BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager? Could it be Fidelity? I think it's the second largest asset manager with four and a half trillion. Could it be ARC 21 shares with Kathy Wood? Uh, the deadline for the SEC to respond now is January 10th. So there's comes the deadline becomes before the other ones? Or do you think they'll all likely get the green light at the same time so that they don't show, um, what's the word, um, allowing one to get the first mover's advantage ultimately, you know what I mean? So keeping it fair within the market space. How do you think that's likely to play out? Let me know, fam. And by what month do you think that ETF will be approved? All I know is if we get this baby approved before the Bitcoin halving, scheduled to take place in April of 2024, game on. 2024 can be the most bullish year in Bitcoin history we have seen for a very long time. So personally, I cannot freaking wait. And before we break down our next story of the day, just a quick shout out to everyone in the live chat interacting. Shout out to uh, Nate. What it do? Bitcoin Maximus, Tim's crypto favoritism. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. Everyone show Tim crypto some love over there. Phil C, appreciate you fam. Thanks for the love. Ambrosia Chocolate Factory. What it do? Doug Joseph, Leve, what up? Relaxing. Good to see you. Passive Income AI. Will Stop Sun versus Guru. McLovin, Jack Jiong, Jeff, what's up? Melda the Witch, Satwise Jenks, Digital Dankness. We got a lot of long term hodlers in the building. Love to see that. Jack says long term hodler. Melda, long term hodler. Maximus, long term hodler. Bad Sunshine, long term hodler. So many long term hodlers. I'm loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Fairground, Tom Snyder. Shout out to all of you. And don't forget, this is a live and interactive show. So don't be shy. And please, don't be a stranger. And with that being shared, fam, now let's break down our next story of the day and discuss the latest with Tesla. They just revealed they didn't dump any of their Bitcoin. They're still holding it, which is definitely a good indicator as well. So let's break this baby down. Electric vehicle maker Tesla made no changes to its sizable Bitcoin holdings for the fifth quarter in a row. However, it has directed more funds to double its company capacity amid artificial 
intelligence efforts. That's right, they're scaling up some AI. Tesla's quarter three 2023 results released on October 18th shows as of September 30th, it held $184 million worth of digital assets, a portion of the one and a half billion worth of Bitcoin it first bought back in March of 2021. And happy 420, by the way, fam, (laughs) precisely as we're talking about Elon, ironic enough. The latest quarterly results mean it hadn't bought or sold any Bitcoin since its sell-off at around 75% of its holdings in quarter two of last year when it fetched $936 million for more than 30,000 BTC. And here you can see the balance sheet from Tesla for the third quarter. Now, on the other hand, keep in mind, Tesla reported it had more than doubled the size of its computing power for its AI projects, citing a growing training data set and switching the training of a humanoid robot, Optimus, to AI rather than coded software. Quoting them here, we have uh, commissioned one of the world's largest supercomputers to accelerate the pace of our AI development with compute capacity more than doubling compared to quarter two. Now, Tesla saw its third quarter earnings and profits missed the Wall Street estimates with reported total revenues of $23.35 billion. While this was up nearly 9% from the previous year period, it missed Zach's investment research estimate of $24.3 billion. Pretty close enough, wouldn't you say? It also missed projected profits with reported earnings per share of 66 cents compared to Zach's 72 cents estimates. So the total third quarter operating expenses came in at $2.41 billion, marking more than a 13% increase from the last quarter and over a 42.5% increase from the previous year. Now, Tesla's research and development expenses were $1.16 billion in the quarter. Oh my God, that's wild. A 58% jump from last year. It attributed the increases to its Cybertruck, a AI and other R&D projects. And at this time, Tesla's currently down uh, roughly, uh, was that 4% on the hour, 12% for the day and trading at $242 per share. How many of you are bullish on Tesla? Let me know. All I know is this, it's a damn good sign when Tesla is not selling their Bitcoin, especially that Elon's a little sus when it comes to being a Bitcoin event, uh, a Bitcoin enemy as it was the ESG FUD he used as an excuse to stop accepting Bitcoin payments from his car company. So we'll see if he ever changes that and starts accepting Bitcoin payments once again. And speaking of Elon Musk, he is partnering up with Mark Cuban, that's right, and they're going after the SEC. So let's break this down before we dive into our $1 million price prediction within the next three years, and I break down this timeline for you. And again, shout out to everyone just joining us today in that live chat. Now, Elon Musk, Mark Cuban, and others have collaboratively submitted a shared amicus brief to the Supreme Court of the United States to raise concerns about the U.S. SEC's approach to conducting internal proceedings without the inclusion of juries. Now, Mark Cuban, we all know from Shark Tank, the billionaire crypto investor and decentralized finance advocate who actively engages in the crypto space, and Elon, CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, who recently rebranded Twitter to X, wields influence and controversy in crypto, both assert that these administrative proceedings produce uh, disparate outcomes for individuals facing SEC charges. And consequently, this approach has raised concerns about the potential infringement of the U.S. Constitution's Seventh Amendment right to a jury trial. The context of this legal challenge centers around the SEC versus Jarksy case. Now, George uh, Jarksy, if I'm pronouncing this name right, contends that the Seventh Amendment rights were violated in this specific case. He argues that the SEC's internal uh, adjudication process lacks a jury and is over seen by an administrative law judge appointed by the commission contradicts these rights. This effectively results in a single entity fulfilling the roles of a judge, jury, and enforcer. Well, good for them for going against the SEC. We know the SEC's history with uh, Elon Musk. Uh, Elon Musk says they ultimately put a gun to his head and forced him to lie, which I have shared uh, previously before. Now, Musk, Cuban, and other amicus curiae highlights a shift in the SEC's approach between 2013 and 2014. They observed that the SEC started handling more cases internally rather than through the federal courts. This change occurred after a string of unsuccessful insider trading cases were tried before the juries. Do you think the SEC is overreaching their power? It seems to be this way, so I'm personally happy that they're doing something about it. Musk is facing his third notable legal dispute with the Financial Regulatory Agency. 
So again, Musk versus the SEC 3.0. This comes in the wake of the prior lawsuits in 2018 and 2019. And currently, the regulatory body is pursuing the involvement of a federal court to request Musk's tes testimony regarding his acquisition of Twitter with a specific focus on his public statements about the transaction as disclosed in legal records. Now, a lot of you guys probably probably have the same belief as me. You know, he is a proponent for free speech. He ultimately is transforming what Twitter used to be as a controlled, censored network to being able to say anything you want. He brought back a lot of the people who got banned from social media, such as the Tates and et cetera. So maybe this is the way of the, you know, powers that be, the SEC, going after him to try to teach him a lesson, put him in his place. I don't know. But what's your honest thoughts and how do you feel this will likely play out? And do you think we can get the power of the law back in the hands of the people versus these regulators who are misusing and overusing and abusing their power, just like the chairman of the SEC, Mr. Gary Gensler? Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. Yeah. Let me know. And massive shout out again to everyone in that live chat. Now let's break down our breaking story of the day. And that's a $1 million price prediction for the King Crypto on the back of a Bitcoin ETF spot getting approved in 2024. This analyst says within the next three years, we can see a seven figure Bitcoin price. So let's break this baby down, shall we? Here we go. And again, much love, everyone. Since the Bitcoin price crossed the 50,000 mark back in the 2021 bull market, there have been speculations when the price will hit $100,000 and on the extreme end, $1 million per Bitcoin. So over time, various analysts and pundits have put forward their forecasts. But the most recent of these is from a budding economist by the name of Alessandro, who believes the Bitcoin can hit the 1 million mark within the next three years. Send it. Let's freaking go, fam. You already know. So here's what he has to share. He made a post by pointing out that these Bitcoin market cap have climbed rapidly following the fake news of the spot Bitcoin ETF approval, which is fact. Bitcoin climbed above 30000 surging roughly $2,500 within minutes off the back of that false rumor. Now recall on Monday, the media outlet Cointelegraph made that post saying that the US SEC had approved the BlackRock iShare spot Bitcoin ETF filing, which we all know now is false. So following this, the price of Bitcoin instantly surged above 30 Gs, baby. And in a matter of minutes, over 50 billion bucks was added to the crypto market's cap. And as the analyst points out, going by Bitcoin's reaction to this news, which eventually turned out to be fake, the analyst was able to draw a parallel for what might happen when the spot Bitcoin ETFs are actually approved for real. Let's go. Quoting him here, he actually made this post on crypto Twitter. I'm going to read it all to you. Here's what he shared. Main takeaway of today, the Bitcoin market cap went up by more than $50 billion in minutes. And very likely, the money flowing into Bitcoin were less than $500 million, which is a ratio of 100 to 1. A former BlackRock director said we can expect 150 to $200 billion flowing into Bitcoin in three years after the Bitcoin ETFs are finally approved. So keeping this same ratio with 200 billion, we would have a market cap, a 21 trillion, interesting number there, 21 trillion, as we know there is a 21 million finite limited market cap. Anyways, he says the Bitcoin price here would be $1 million per coin with a 21 trillion market cap. Now, surely on the way up, there will be many people selling, but this is already uh, directionally clear how much could be the effect of the Bitcoin ETF being approved. Great point. And someone responded, if you want it to say 21 trillions, you need 21 trillions. Miracles don't exist. And the, the analyst responded, no way. You don't understand how capital markets work. We absolutely don't need 21 trillion of dollars to have a market cap of 21 trillion. And then they're making fun of him. Do you believe in Santa Claus? And he responded again, you don't understand how markets work. Read this article by Bloomberg. Do you really think that today in a few minutes, there were $50 billion flowing into Bitcoin? And the analyst here clearly makes a good point. So he pointed out that his 50 billion increase in the market cap came from around that 500 million injection into the market. That's all it took, meaning the market cap rose at a ratio of 100 to 1, as he pointed out. Thus, going by what BlackRock director and CEO Larry Fink said about the spot Bitcoin ETF triggering 150 to $200 billion uh, worth of capital to flow into the asset. He explained that this would put the Bitcoin market cap at 21 trillion. And at a 21 trillion market cap, the price of each Bitcoin would be going for $1 million per coin. Now, when will that happen? 
Million dollar question. When Fink made his forecast that 150 to 200 billion dollars could flow into Bitcoin, he said this could happen over a three year period. So if a spot Bitcoin ETF is approved in 2024 on track, like we're anticipating potentially by January, then Analysts believe the price of Bitcoin would reach this $1 million mark by the year 2027 to 2028, if all goes according to plan. Quoting him here, surely on the way up, there will be many people selling, but this is already directionally clear how much could be the effect of the Bitcoin ETFs being approved. So there you have it, fam. Let me know if you agree or disagree with this analyst. I definitely know the possibilities of what can happen with Bitcoin. Again, the biggest catalysts are right around the corner. We're on the cusp of them right now. Bitcoin having less than six months away, probably take place sometime in April 2024. January, we could finally get the green light from the SEC for these Bitcoin spot ETFs. Potentially, all the major institutions getting the green light around the same time, kind of like a domino effect. Bada boom, bada bing. Now, these major institutions have to hold on to the underlying asset to even offer the spot Bitcoin ETF because it's true price discovery. There's no manipulation in the spot market. The manipulation comes from the derivatives and the futures markets. Why is the SEC and the chairman, Gary Gensler, allowing futures ETFs before spot ETFs, claiming it's in the best interest of the investors? He is full of it. Obviously, they don't want the ETF approved right now because it undermines the value of the US dollar. Bitcoin can go north, returning to an all-time high. God candle, super saiyan, you name it. Bada boom, bada bing. And then what? Everyone's going to take their money out of the dollar and put it into Bitcoin. It can crash the US dollar. This is a very real probability. Gary Gensler would never say that. Instead, what did he say? I don't know what's a security, uh, unregistered, or a commodity. We don't know. I am no clarity, Gary, and I'm not going to provide any clarity. That way, the markets are unsure, and there's fear in the markets, and the price won't pump. We don't want the ETF, is basically what he is saying. But guess what? He can only push it back for so long. So eventually, he's going to have to man up and say, hey, time to approve this mofo. But right now, I think they're allowing their homeboys on Wall Street to get their positions, allowing the Black Rocks, the Fidelities to stack those sats on the low sub 30,000 versus at all time high levels. And you have the opportunity right now to front run Wall Street and all these major institutions that have a, a combined market cap of over $20 trillion. The total addressable market is north of $700 trillion. The Bitcoin market cap today is still a pup. We're at $500 billion, not even a half a freaking trillion. We're just getting started, fam. If you can feel my excitement, you already know. Massive shout out to everyone in that live chat today. Now is our live Q&A session, so let's freaking go. Shout out to Passive Income. What it do? Relaxing, meditation, music. I love it. <laughs> it sounded like that. I appreciate it. Sell it, relaxing, buy six more in another two years. Can you say? Front run. <laughs> you already know. And what do you guys think of the new layout? Give me some feedback. Are you appreciating the show? Do you like the format? please do let me know. Massive shout out to our producer behind the scenes, Digital Dankness, for creating all of these overlays at 2 a.m. last night and making all of this possible in the first place. Much love and much respect. Shout out to Jay Ivy. Let's roll with JV. Howdy from Texas. Shout out to all my peeps from Texas. Much love, much respect. Texas is always doing it big. You already know. Chris Minko, what it do? The banks are sitting on hundreds of billion in unrealized losses on their bonds. If a large amount of cash deposits move into Bitcoin, those losses become realized and banking crisis happens, right? Just like we witnessed with the regional banking crisis earlier in the year in the United States. And how did the Bitcoin market react to that? fan freaking tastic So let's freaking go. Bank runs can occur like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, shout out to Dankness, much love, and check out his YouTube channel. It's Coin IQ. Everyone go over there and subscribe, show him some love. It's a new channel, excellent content, and he is a fellow brother here in the show. So show him some love. Shout out to Phil C. Appreciate the love. Texas in the building. That's right. Shout out to Bitcoin Trini. Yeah, what it do? Phil C. Appreciate seeing you guys too. Much love, much respect. What up, Dragon Man? What a cool name. When the alt's going to pump? Probably following the bullish trajectory of Bitcoin, in my humble opinion, as they say, a rising tide rises all ships. So as the Bitcoin tide continues to rise, approaching into 2024 with the Bitcoin having, the altcoins will likely follow. That is the real 
use cases, the ones with the real utility will stick around, I'm sure, but there's plenty of them, probably tens of thousands that will get wrecked and virtually go to zero. We all know Bitcoin is the apex predator. You know what I mean? When it comes to store value, there is no comparison with other any other cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is the only truly decentralized crypto, hence why it's the king. It's incorruptible. It's decentralized. It is borderless. It is proof of work, unlike proof of stake with Ethereum, which in my humble opinion was their downfall. I think Bitcoin likely to outpace Ethereum this cycle. We see the ETH dominance in the market continuing to decline roughly at 17% today. As Bitcoin dominance continues to climb, we're now north of 51%, ultimately meaning this is a 51% attack on the alts. So be careful out there as a lot of alts will absolutely get wrecked fam as we see each and every cycle. You know what I mean? I just subscribed to digital dankness. Shout out to Cushy. That's what's up. Appreciate you showing him some love. Ishcoins pump after Bitcoin has the mega pump. Then some of the capital will rotate into one of those ish coins. There you go. That's typically what happens. Chris Minka nailed it. There is one physician and one church pastor in this group. So this should be interesting. He says that wise. Oh, for real. Can't see Nipsey. I guess our screen isn't as wide as it typically is, but you'll see him. Stick around. I'm sure he'll come out here and say hello to y'all. John Kidwell, keep up the good work. Much love. Appreciate that, guys. Much love, much respect. Uh, head to the Bitcoin meetup I found on an orange pill app. Oh, interesting. In Pennsylvania, about an hour 20 ride through beautiful fall foliage. Well, I'm glad you got to meet up with some fellow Bitcoiners. That's what's up. Shout out to Joe P. It's crazy to me that almost everyone I know doesn't know ish about Bitcoin. That's because we're early. If everyone knew about it, it'd already be above a million dollars. Real talk. I'm telling you. Say more. McCollum, let's go. Send it. Bring it. Appreciate it. Chris, the banks, is, yeah, exactly. Bank runs can occur at any moment. The The banking system has never been so fragile before, and they know this. Janet Yellen knows this. Christine Lagarde know this. All the enemies of Bitcoin know this. All the central banking cartel members know this. Just a matter of time. What up, Chris? Appreciate you guys. J-Dub the Laker, appreciate you. Appreciate you tuning in. Zero Dollar G Row in the building. What it do? Uh, near the top of 2025 was the move. I just want to hold, but seems unwise of historically we cracked by 75%. Any advice? I mean, history does show us uh, we do have drawdowns, sometimes as much as 95%, but I personally feel the bigger the market gets, the more stable it will become and we'll see less and less of a drawdown. But you are right. Maybe we hit the all-time high, hypothetically speaking. Let's say it's Max Kaiser's target of 220,000. Let's say it happens at the end of 2024 for the sake of conversation. And then um, who knows? Bitcoin can potentially drop 90% from that $220,000 top. It's possible, but there's also the probability we may not crack as steep. Maybe instead of 90%, it gradually slows down and maybe we correct 60%, maybe 75%. Then the next cycle, instead of 75%, maybe we correct 40% or 30%. And then a few cycles in, year 2030 comes around, maybe instead of a drawback or drawdown of uh, 30%, it's down to 15%. It's all going to depend on how big the market is. As the market you know, to get the needle to move, the less money in the market, the easier that needle will move. But the larger the market cap, the harder to move that needle. Let me know if that makes sense to you, fam. Yeah. So the SEC might actually be helping us out a lot, uh, says Joe. I don't know. I still feel SEC are enemies of Bitcoin. I think they're enemies of all crypto. And I just think they could never say that because they'll look like bad guys. But I feel they're all criminals. Yeah, exactly, Phil. <laughs> I do feel they're criminal. I, I believe Gary Gensler, what he's doing is criminal. But that's just me. Sounds like JV is an Elon fan now. No, I am not. But I am a little surprised that he didn't sell any of that Bitcoin because in the back of my mind, I'm like, he's going to dump it. It's going to be another FUD attack, and I wouldn't put it past them. So I'm still sus about Elon, so don't get me wrong, but I'm just reporting the news. You know what I mean? What do you guys think about Elon? Let me know. Tesla truck released November 30th. Is anyone getting that Tesla truck? It looks massive, but it looks like a tank. You can just drive, and people can shoot bullets at you, and you can be golden. Probably in today's uh, state of the world, uh, probably not a bad idea to own one. Hopium. That's right. Here on Crypto News Alerts, we take hits from the Hopium Bong every day. You know what I mean? 
every day. So if you like hopium, you've come to the right place. <laughs> 420 each and every day. You nailed it, Will. Yeah, darn. I mean, I appreciate you tuning in, Nate. It's all good. Kathy Wood. Yeah, shout out to Kathy Wood. Ambrosia, what it do? Smash that like. That's right. The greatest compliment you can do is smash the like button. Let's help get this channel to 100,000 subscribers. I feel I deserve it. If you feel this channel deserves 100,000 subs, smash the like button. Show some love because if you show no love, YouTube sure as hell is not going to show no love. I think this channel got shadow banned years ago. I hit 50,000 subs back in 2020. The previous bull market, uh, you know, 1,500 shows later, I only have 58,000 subs. I've had my account terminated uh, on false claims. You know what I mean? George of Cryptos R Us got his channel just recently terminated. Good news, he got the channel back. However, now he's streaming on X, he's streaming on Rumble, because now content creators are not trusting YouTube the same way as we once did. That's why I advise everyone to follow me on Rumble. I'm on the cusp of hitting a thousand followers over there because number one, it's uncensored crypto news alerts. I can speak freely without worrying about if what I'm going to say is going to offend the powers that be because I have a different opinion or point of view and they can terminate my channel and claim it's dangerous content like they did previously. Anything is possible. We all know that. That's right. Bitcoin is pumping. So let's keep it pumping, shall we? We're approaching 28,800. You can see the Bitcoin price action. That's a live stream from a live chart. So pretty cool, right? Yeah, that's what's up. Elon's cool. He does his own thing, says Chris. Everyone's smashed now. Thanks for the reminder. Relaxing. I appreciate that. Bitcoin is pumping. The gym is pumping. That's right. Do you have a license for those guns? <laughs> you guys are awesome. Much love, much respect. Let's freaking go. Yes, Rado, uh, Rodolfo, what up? I got some new people here to the show I've never seen before, which I love. Shout out to Felix Hopkins. Freedom of speech. That's right. If you value freedom of speech, you got to follow crypto news alerts over on Rumble. Because again, it's a platform where I can speak freely and it's exclusive for the JB React session. You can see I have this sexy, what's called a roadcaster studio thing right here and all of these smart pads have different sound banks in them not only can i play music for you guys on rumble without having to worry about copyright bs but i can also do react live and which i use adult content so family friendly over on youtube rumble for you guys that want the uncensored version of crypto news alerts because as soon as this live q a session ends on the tube we're gonna continue over on Rumble, and I actually stream simultaneously on both platforms at the same time. For example, here is uh, the YouTube chat, and here's the scene for the Rumble chat. So shout out to everyone in the Rumble chat as well, as we do have an audience over there, which we're going to all move to here shortly. Uh, so yeah, what else are you guys excited about in the crypto market this week? There's so much going on. It's insane. Sanity, says Tim. <laughs> Word up, Tim. I bought that dip on September 5th at around 25 5,000. Well, well done. Congratulations. It paid off because now you're up almost $4,000 if you bought a whole coin. I guess it all depends on how much you bought, but that's irrelevant. Yeah, man. Smart man. <laughs> well done. And uh, I think those of you stacking sat sub 30,000, it's a genius move, especially when you're looking back a few years from now, 100%. Uh, What's up, Beckham? 88,000 Bitcoin before Christmas. I hope you're right, Beckham, because that would be a merry, merry Christmas. And if we can hit 88,000 before the end of the year, we'll set up our $100,000 Bitcoin fiesta in the beautiful island of Puerto Rico, where I'm broadcasting live from right now. And I'd love to meet you all face to face. If everyone is a sheep, how will the masses use, use Bitcoin to a million dollars? Hmm. I don't understand your question completely there, but it's irrelevant how many sheep are in the world. Bitcoin is going to pump because of the long-term hodlers. Not all of the seven or eight billion people in the world need to get Bitcoin. I ain't trying to wake up the sheep or the sheeple, as the elite call us, the sheep people. I'm just trying to nudge the sleeping lions and say, get up, let's go. I ain't trying to convince anyone. I'm just trying to nudge the right people so they can get on it. Everyone will pay Bitcoin price they deserve. Everyone. And some of you guys probably don't even own any Bitcoin yet, so you need to get with it. Don't sit on the sidelines, because if you sit on the sidelines too long, you're considered a bench warmer and you're not in the game. And if you're not in the game, you can't complain. So why are the people without the Bitcoin always the biggest trolls that are always complaining? Things that make you go, hmm. 
That's what's up. I started buying Bitcoin at around 4,000. You're a legend, Cushy. Much love, much respect. Passive income with AI. Much love, much respect. Trini, 100,000 Bitcoin party. Who's joining us? By a show of hands, who's coming to Puerto Rico to celebrate the $100,000 fiesta for the price action of Bitcoin? Let me know because you're all invited. Now check it out. Bitcoin's continuously pumping up. I think we're on the cusp of uh, retesting 29,000 as a resistance. And I feel if we can break above that, logically, the psychological level of 30,000 is the next big uh, target. We can do it. Folsom HODL says XRP. Yeah, I see. XRP pumping. A lot of the coins are pumping right now. That's what's up. Keep it moving, as I like to say. Melda, if you don't have Bitcoin, not sure about, then start with a small amount, $100 or so. Good point. Probably one of the biggest misconceptions with Bitcoin is like, oh my God, it's 28000 I could never afford a whole one, but I'll just buy a whole XRP coin for $0.48. Cents. Okay. You can own a fraction of a Bitcoin. One Bitcoin can be divided by 100 million Satoshis. That's what makes it superior to gold and its divisibility. You know what I mean? So you can, as Melda pointed out, purchase $100 of Bitcoin just to say you're in the game. It's better to have a $100 position versus being a no-coiner with virtually zero Bitcoin. So I think that is sage advice. Maximus says $100,000 party. Love to hear that. I can't wait to see you, fam. I'm coming to Puerto Rico, work with or with my wife, kid, and my brother. Let's freaking go. Can't wait. Music to my ears. Only a short trip from Miami. I'll be there. Word up. Bring it. I have Bitcoin. I am not trolling. Was a good question. All good. <laughs> And that's right. For those of you who want to visit Puerto Rico, if you're already a U.S. citizen, it doesn't require a passport because Puerto Rico is considered a U.S. territory. So it makes it very easy to travel here. And you're right. Uh, a trip from Florida, like from Tampa, where I came from before moving here, it's maybe a three hour flight. So it's very easy. It's easy peasy. It's a no brainer simple flight. And by the time Bitcoin's 100,000, some of you guys will probably be flying here on a private jet. I wouldn't put that past you because we all know some of you got in very, very early, very early. Wow. Is it right now 55 cents XRP? That's good. Earlier today, I remember it was 48 cents. That means it's pumping, obviously. Good sign for the XRP hodlers and the XRP army. You can disguise yourself with it. <laughs> Word up. Great disguise there. Yeah, I mean, let's just keep it pumping. Why, why don't we? You know what I mean? But you know what time it is. It's time to move over to Rumble. So I, hopefully you join us over on Rumble. We'll continue with the pumpage. We have a JV React session coming. Um, uncensored JV, uncensored crypto news alerts. If you gain value out of today's show over on YouTube, be sure to smash that thumbs up. Again, it's the greatest compliment and it helps out extra tremendously with that YouTube algorithm. And again, if you like the new look, uh, give some love to Digital Dankness for making this possible. Again, he was up to like 2 a.m. Uh, creating all of these new designs uh, for the overlays so we can have a fantastic interactive show. Show Dankness some love. Subscribe to his channel as well. It's Coin IQ. I also have a new channel I launched last month. It's called Clips, Crypto News Alerts Clips. It can be found at clips.cryptonewsalerts.net. We just hit 700 subscribers today. I want to get that channel to 1,000, obviously. And here's how the new channel works. We're taking shorts and clips exclusively from the daily live stream from the main channel and we're putting the shorts and the clips exclusively on the clips channel so if you like to see one minute clips 30 second clips two minute clips five minute clips versus only always seeing a one hour to 90 minute video then make sure to subscribe and show us support on the clips channel i greatly appreciate that and i look forward to seeing you all shortly over on rumble the rumble link for crypto news alerts is rumble.com CryptoNewsAlerts.net, or simply just go to Rumble and type in Crypto News Alerts. You can't miss me. You'll see the account. That my account has 950 plus followers. We're on the cusp of hitting a thousand, so hopefully we can cross that uh, mark today. Anyways, fam, I appreciate the support over on YouTube. Now let's all head over to Rumble, shall we? Deuces. All right, Rumblers.